The company behind the Miss Universe pageant has filed for bankruptcy. The company is owned and run by Anne Jakarjutahip. She's a transgender woman who took over the event in 2022. Emily Austin was a judge in the Miss Universe pageant in 2022, and she joins me now. The prominence of the trans owner, is that what did them in? Socially, absolutely. I think the outrage about a trans woman coming to Miss Universe and preaching, bring the power back to women, couldn't be more of an oxymoron. And so it, they're bankrupt? Uh, the transgender issue is one of the reasons for that bankruptcy? I think so. I think her company in Thailand has its own financial issues, but socially and morally it's just wrong and people are starting to catch on that. Are trans women allowed in beauty pageants, generally speaking? They are. The question is, should they be allowed? And my answer is they should not. Absolutely not. Why? Because if you want to empower women, the way to do it is not demeaning women and belittling women by allowing men or biological men who became a woman to come into an industry like sports, like beauty pageants, come all dolled up plastic, beautiful men, by the way, and start dominating women's industries. That's the opposite of women's empowerment. But I, I can understand not allowing trans athletes to compete with biological men and biological women. I can understand that. But a beauty pageant is all about look. It's not For about, women. It, yeah, but it's not all about power and speed and strength. It's the look. And if the yes. look is a woman, why would you object to that? So yes and no. So being a judge, I can attest that a lot of it is the interview. And the interview comes from your life story and how, as a woman, you've evolved and you want to change the world. So if you grew up a man and you decided to become a woman, I don't think you have a true woman's feminine story. You don't know what period cramps feel like. I'm sorry. You don't know what it's like to walk down a, a stage, you know, during that time of the month and really say, this is femininity. No, you're not. You are a man who identifies as a woman, and that's fine, but don't start coming into women's industries. Like, have a line, have a boundary. That's okay. the problem. Okay, moving on. Last time you joined us on this program, you had to have a bodyguard with you because you take a very strong stance in support of Israel. You still have the bodyguard? I have a security squad now. We, we rotate bodyguards. Um, You've got a team around you? Is that necessary, really? So what, I do a lot of public appearances. Um, oh, okay. I, I do a lot of public speaking, and it's a lot of the times outdoor, and a lot of the times I'm tagged, and it's announced through LB. You could do it with a quick Google search. I don't know why I'm promoting that, but I have a team, so I'm safe. Are you still receiving death threats or, or oh, yeah. threats of any kind? Yeah, you know, you'd think it would have settled down, but as time goes on, it seems like because the conflict is taking so much media presence, um, they're still angry and they're still violent. I mean, we see they tried to break into the White House. Like, who, are, well, who am I? Tonight? Has anybody come after you, literally, in no, front of you? I've gotten booed. Someone even in Times Square tried to spit on me last week, but my bodyguard was like, should I do something? I was like, just let's leave. Um, but actually come with a gun and try to kill me? Thank God, no. Okay. Emily Austin, come back soon, please. We want to hear your views on all kinds of things. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate Thanks. it.